Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good weekend, and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the video series that hardly anybody watches, and those of you who do seem to not actually like very much. Unfortunately, today's video is probably not going to help to change that. First off, let me say, and I know I've said it before, but it's worth repeating, I do actually like this game. There is a lot to like here. I don't like it as much as Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, in particular, I really miss the ship battles, which, having never played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, uh, struck me when I first started playing Odyssey as something incredibly new and innovative, and of course, it wasn't, but I had a lot of fun with the naval battles in Odyssey, and I very much enjoyed them, and I was looking forward to them here in Valhalla as well. I mean, the Greeks weren't exactly known as much for their naval battles as they were for their land battles. With some exceptions, obviously. It's not that the Greeks didn't engage in naval battles, they absolutely did, although most people would be hard-pressed to name one of them, with the possible exception being the Battle of Salamis. But when it comes to land battles, most people can reel off half a dozen famous Greek land battles. The Athenians, in particular, were well known for their navy. Most other Greek city-states, in particular the Spartans, not so much. But then we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it's the Vikings who are arguably the greatest race of sailors, even though technically they're not a race because they come from all different countries, but Vikings! <laughs> sailors! They made it to America for God's sake. No, no naval battles in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's almost as if Ubisoft were having a strokey beard development meeting at Ubisoft headquarters, and after the success of the naval battles in Black Flag, they put them into Odyssey, where they were just as, if not more, successful. And they decided, well, yeah, people really seem to like these. And our next game features some of the most famous sailors in history. So you all know what we have to do here, right? That's right, not put naval battles in, and not a single person at that meeting said, wait, that's a terrible idea, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I realise that the Vikings weren't actually known for naval battles. Generally speaking, unlike with Greek galleys and triremes and biremes, longships didn't fight longships. They were mostly used as a method of transport to get Viking infantry from point A to point B. But still, I mean, what a massive wasted opportunity. So if you pressed me to name one thing that I really don't like about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it would have to be the fact that there are no naval battles. There are other things about the game that tend to wind me up a little as well. And one of these things I have mentioned in a previous video. At the moment, we're travelling to a place called Repton in Leicestershire in order to meet Sigurd, who's up there working out a deal with the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok. And on the way, I thought I may as well pick up as much stuff as possible. So, for example, I'm stopping on the way at a place called Venonis, which is in Leicestershire, and it's chock full of stuff. There are Roman artefacts here, there are a couple of tunnels, there's some kind of treasure and loot here, and there's a vantage point. Now, remember, this is in Leicestershire, which has a recommended power rating of 20. And I've just spotted a zealot, completely by accident, I didn't even know he was here. Now, I have no idea what this guy's power level is. But one thing I do know, it ain't 20. I don't think it's even 90. I think it's probably over 100. Might even be over 200. Gonna hit him with an explosive arrow, blown him clean off his horse, possibly even set him on fire. see if we can sneak up on him. Take off a large chunk of his health with an assassination attack. I mean he's alert at the moment but we're gonna be sneaky sneaky. At the moment I have zero indication of what this guy's actual power level is. Habit. Ah. Yes. Actually no. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is, I'm hitting him, and it's basically not doing any damage. I hit him in a weak spot, which did a little bit of damage, which he then appeared to almost immediately heal back. 
Right. Anyway, I'll cut a long story short here. Uh, I waste all of my arrows on this guy, doing basically zero damage. I've used all of my health kits because he can basically kill me in three hits. And I've lured him next to my ship, where my entire crew, I don't know, 12 Vikings, are filling him full of arrows. And he's not taking any damage from it. Like I said, Leicestershire, recommended power level 20. And just casually wandering around the roads and by lanes of Leicestershire is a guy whose power level is probably closer to 200. I mean, there's a 20 in it. <laughs> but it's not 20. And you don't know. I mean, you've got no way of knowing how tough this guy is until you foolishly decide to attack him. At which point, unless you're extremely good or just extremely lucky, he hands you your ass in three hits. I mean, my entire longship crew is fighting this guy, and he's winning. And I keep trying to sneak up on him and take off a chunk of his health with an assassination attack, but... Yeah. No. <laughs> so this just seems to me like another one of those things where they had a big stroky beard pipe smoking meeting at Ubisoft headquarters and said, you know what would be a really good idea? <laughs> and once again... Nobody said, actually, that's one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. And so people like this made it into the game. And here's the thing. This Venonis area, there's all kinds of good stuff here. Uh, there are at least two hidden tunnels. There are some Roman artifacts. There's, I think, uh, an ability skill book. Possibly also a piece of an armor set. Uh, all kinds of loot. All of which... If you're thinking of going after it, it is going to prove to be extremely hazardous to your health, thanks to the presence of somebody who has absolutely no business whatsoever being in an area with this kind of recommended power level. Good job, Ubisoft. This is not an isolated incident, by the way, and this isn't even the first time I've run into one of these zealots who's ridiculously powerful for the area in which you encounter them. This happens all the way throughout the game. Well, shortly afterwards, without further incident, we arrive at the town of Repton in Leicestershire, where Sigurd, as mentioned, is working out a deal with Ivar and Bubba, who are the sons of Ragnar Lothbrook. I'm not going to go through the whole sequence of events here in Leicestershire in today's video, uh, but I do want you to meet Ivar and Bubba, in particular Ivar, because he's quite a character. And he's going to be important for what's coming up next. Who stands before Ivar Ragnarsson? Are you Sigurd Drenger? Igor! Eivor! If you keep that up, I'll stay in the floors. The place could use some color. <laughs> Who are they? All spies. Dressed to look the part of a peasant. Got feisty. Pitchfork. From this rabid little one. Was a time when you met and slew your enemy on the field before they could dream of things like... Sending fires! <laughs> now we shake hands and make deals. Not my thing. I figured. I love them whipped, weeping, and reeking of piss. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Good boy. You're free, Saxon piggy. Uh, uh, to run amok to the mercy in fields. Uh, 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 I would have let him down easy. Hmm. 
follow me. I'll give you the door. What do you call this place? I call it the shithole. To the Mercians, it is Reptar. Their most revered kings are buried below the church. Imagine their weeping when we drove them out. You planted your knife deep into the heart of this kingdom. That is right. We've got a number of Saxon nobles lined up with their lips puckered, ready to kiss our asses. The only holdout is King Burgred and his war thane, Leofrid. But my brother is brewing a plan to deal with them. I take it that's where we'll find my brother. Right. Talkers they are, Uba and Sigurd. Might want to dig the wax from your ears. Now, I really like the character of Ivar Ragnarsson. I mean, he's brutal, he's violent, and his solution to most problems usually involves sticking sharp metal objects into them, but do not make the mistake of thinking that he's stupid. I'm not going anywhere, Backrot. You have the king on his heels because of me. Because of my men. For which you were paid. But that price does not change because you have caught a whiff of our Hexilver horde. You forget I am a sellsword. I ask what I please, and I take what I'm owed. If I wanted to hear you talk shit, I'd gouge out your tongue and shove it up your ass. Now fuck off. Hagging over silver is a bad look for the son of Ragnar Lodbrok. But worry not, Uva. I have the warriors you need. This is one of them. My worries have vanished. Eivor, wolf kissed. You have come at just the right time. Upa and Ivar here are hunting a king. And when we've caught him, we mean to crown another. Our dear Thane Chelwolf here. It's not a role I begged for, but it's what Mercia needs just now. A man to fairly rule both Saxons and Danes. Do you have what it takes to be king? One day, I hope. As it stands, we at least have an understanding. The king has refused our offers of peace. Jailwolf means to change that. There'll be a new king for a new England. For now, Burgred is holed up in his fortress at Tamworth, making a final stand. Another shithole, only further south. We've held a siege there for weeks to no effect. So, no more knocking. Now we batter the gate to splinters. If we take Tamworth, Remove Burgred and crown Shellwolf. Come morning, this Shire is ours. And Mercia soon after. Yes. Remove. I cannot stress that enough. Burgred is not to be harmed. My legitimacy as king hangs on this one simple fact. Uh, you rob all the joy from war, Saxon. Not every victory needs to be marked by the slaughter of a king. But it is much better. His request is fair, Ivar, and we will honor it. Cheowulf is right to be cautious. If he shows mercy to Burkrit, the people will have reason to trust him. My thinking exactly. And the quicker we act, the more lives we spare on both sides. This is a good plan, brother. I'm ready for the coming fight. Agreed. Yet remember this. Whatever you stand to gain here, so do we. An alliance between my clan and Mercia's crown. See this man installed on his throne and you will have it. I swear. The bold sons of Ragnar bellow to sound the spear din and the thunder of shields. So let fall the arrow storm. The battle begins. Ah! You never said this one was a poet. I need to piss. We have a forward camp just north of Tamworth. Will you go with us? Lead the way. Begin the sights of Repton if you like. We will be at the docks when you are ready to go. I'm glad you and your brother have come. If only to bring some measure of calm. Ease yourself, Cheerwolf. We all stand to benefit, and you'll be remembered for this for years to come. For all the wrong reasons, I fear. Personally, I think Keelwolf's plan stinks. If you're going to depose a king, you don't want to leave him alive so he can start a rebellion immediately afterwards. But hey, I'm not the one calling the shots around here. Anyway, 
Now, like I said, we're not going to be going through the entire sequence of events here in Leicestershire. Um, but there are a couple of people that I wanted you to meet. We've already met one of them, Ivar Ragnarsson. And the other one, because he's another likeable character, but for completely different reasons, is Keelwolf's son. A young man who goes by the name of Keelbert. And he's okay. I mean, he's a bit naive, he's a bit of an idealist. But he can look after himself in a fight. And once you've successfully deposed King Burgred and installed Keel Wolf as the new King of Mercia, the new King sends him home with you to keep him out of the way and hopefully learn a few things. Ah, glad to see you made it, Chilbert. Thanks to Sigurd, he was a good guide and even better company. He told me some incredible stories. The best ones were about you. Hopefully nothing too embarrassing. There were a few gems. Not to interrupt, Eivor, but what of Lid Chestershire? The Alliance is one. The sons of Ragnar are friends to our clan. Glad to hear it. Well done to you both. At one time, the title Jarl referred to a man second only to the king. But that use has softened. Now a Jarl may be a chief, a leader, or a man with broad wealth and influence. The world is bigger now, and broken into many pieces. It seems our language must do the same to keep up. <laughs> An interesting thought. Chill, Bird. Your father sent you here to learn, not teach. Then you must start, Eivor. Give us a summary of our recent gains, for instance. The clan is thirsty for knowledge. You want me to give a speech? Right. My friends, hearken to me, and hear a tale of triumph and toil. I have traveled far since we landed, and seen much on the roads and fields of this new England. And for all my travels, strong alliances have we gained. The honorable Cheowulf, King of Mercia, now called his friend. And to the south, Soma Yal's corner, and the Danes of Grandbridge have pledged their oath to us. By Sigurd's hand, and my own, we have strengthened the ties of... You seat yourself as Sigurd's equal in these tales of yours. Would Sigurd do the same if he were here? Yeah, time to be diplomatic here, rather than tell them the truth. I do not claim to be Sigurd's equal, but I will not shy from the triumphs I have fairly won, Dag. Let glory seek and find those who have earned it. If that means me, so be it. If that means you, any of you, all the better. And so I raise my horn, first to Sigurd, may he return to us soon, and to the Raven Clan, the best of friends and fighters. To Sigurd! To Sigurd! May he return and relieve us of you! And may all of you enjoy the ale as much as Dag has. Skull! Skull! You think me drunk, Eivor? Would it soften my blows if I was? Your words are blunt enough. But it would explain your boldness. My eyes are clear and open, and I see before me one eager to claim a piece of Sigurd's glory. No, Dag, I don't think you're drunk. I think you're a loudmouthed fucking idiot, and all of Sigurd's glory has been earned off my back, but now's probably not the time to say that. There's enough glory in the world to go around for all who earn it, and I have no doubt how much I am owed. Just as I thought, you're- Attackers from the river! They look to be Danes! Danes? How many? Too many. Now come, the battle roars already. Bloody curse! What quarrel have Danes with us? Those who can fight, take up your weapons. All others stay here. Yeah. Don't but worry, me. we'll be sorting Dag's loudmouth out later. For now, I'd just like to point out how incredibly casual people are being. <laughs> Standing around chatting during the middle of an attack. Uh, by an unknown force of Danes. This is going to tie into opening up another one of the counties that we're going to have to forge an alliance with later. But what I'd like to do now, well, we'll sort out the battle first, of course. Uh, because, why not? Oh, I have a new weapon, by the way. This is a spear. I really, really like the spear. I don't normally like two-handed weapons in these kind of games. 
I mean, I had some really good two-handed weapons for Cassandra in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but I just didn't like using them because they were so cumbersome. But the spear, it's completely different. It's as fast and agile as a one-handed weapon, but it has the reach of a two-handed weapon. I tended to go with spears in Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well. And it's the same here. Although people have been saying in the comments of previous videos that I really should try out daggers. Um, I haven't actually got one. Not at this stage of the game. I have picked one up later on. But the thing is, later on I also unlocked a talent that gave me the ability to dual wield two-handed weapons. And once you start dual wielding spears, you never want to go back. Is that the last of them? The rivers are clear. If more were coming, they thought better of it. By their colors and markings, I believe they come from Gidland. Are there none left alive to spill their secrets? We may never know why. Here is one. <clears throat> this vermin was crawling to the river, hoping to float away. Uh, uh, have mercy, friend. And you may find an ally with us. Mercy is earned by the quickness of your tongue. Where do you come from, and what is your quarrel with us? We are settled in East Anglia. Newly arrived and hungry for silver. You drifted off course. This is Mercia. As we were ordered. By whom? You bore me. Useless hound, scratching your ass in search of silver. Put an end to this one. Your silence earned you no kindness, Geet. So I'll ask you once more, who sent you? The wind sent us. And the rivers will take us home. He begs for death, Eivor. Give it to him. Or send him home with a warning. Let him tell his people what death awaits them, should they sail this way again. No, nah, not buying that argument, because if yeah, none of them make it back alive, home. they'll get that message not. anyway. And this way I get the pacified dag. Eivor, I could have sent my scouts to follow him home. We might have learned something. The price of such disrespect is death, Randri. Just as Sigurd would have done. I cannot devise a strategy if my advice is ignored. To let that man live would announce to the world that we are soft and cowardly. Now these wayward Danes know to fear us. Forgive my haste, Ranvi, but Dag is right. For once you see clearly. I beg the gods that it continues. We should clean this mess and move the bodies from the camp. Agreed. Then we talk of our next steps together. Can I just point out that that's not what Ranvi said? She complains that she can't devise a strategy if her advice is ignored. That's not the advice that she gave. She said that we should let him go, so he could deliver a warning to the people who sent him. But, well, killing them all also sends a pretty clear warning to the people who sent them, and then complains that she could have had him followed. Well, if that was your plan, maybe you should have mentioned it, rather than giving us shit for not doing what you didn't tell us to do. But, well, in the grand scheme of things that piss me off about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Norwegian Cassandra's attitude there is actually one of the minor things. Here in the county of Shropshire, we're going to run into the thing about this game that has pissed me off more than anything else. And the reason why I've taken such great pains to introduce you to the characters of Ivar Ragnarsson and Chelbert is because they're major characters here in Shropshire, as is Rory, the King of the Britons. And that's another thing that pisses me off, by the way. Although, again, relatively minor in the grand scheme of things about Assassin's Creed Valhalla that wind me up. The way they pronounce the name of Rory, the King of the Britons, they pronounce it Rodri. Which, to be fair, is the way it looks written down, but, well, if you know anything about Celtic pronunciation, usually when the letter D follows a vowel, the D is silent. So it's pronounced Rory, and that's what I'll be calling him, because that's his fucking name. But again, in the grand scheme of things about Assassin's Creed Valhalla that pissed me off, this is also fairly minor. It's absolutely nothing compared to what happens when you're here in Shropshire. And that is the reason why I've spent this time introducing you and letting you get to know the characters of Ivar Ragnarsson and Chilbert, because they're major players here in the county of Shropshire. <laughs> Not half bad, boy. But 
be fierce, dirty, strike at my ball. Ivar, are you training the boy or tormenting him? One will lead to the other in time. Eivor, well met. You received my message, and just in time. Our negotiations with the Britons have not yet begun. I will be at your side when they do. Is there anything I should know first? The venerable King Rodri is here. I am to deal with him directly. Rodri is desperate for peace. Ever since we captured his sniveling brother, Goriad. Sounds like a man coughing up snot. Goriad ap Mervin. Rodri waits at the church nearby. Who speaks for Shirapshire in these talks? The last elderman was killed in battle. Bishop Deolov is standing in. Until we get this wet whelp installed. That is his father's wish. I find the idea of leading a shire on my own quite... quite terrifying. It is a grave thing to be elderman in the time of war, Jelbert. He will piss his pants first thing, that's for certain. As future elderman, you should speak in the talks as well. But with humility. Rodri is a king and will expect to be treated as one. Rodri will want us to get down on our knees and sniff the rosy wind blowing from his ass. I know the man. You've met him? Met him, fought him. He gave me this nick here. Maybe I can give him one back. Remind him some call me King Killer. It may be you should stay behind, Ivar. That is not a recipe for a good parley. I'd like you both to be there. To guide me, to judge my fitness. Give us your word then. Your blade stays in its sheath. Eivor, don't make me laugh. We both know what my word is worth. But sure, I will let you do the talking. Probably. Excellent. Now, to the church, I think. Our guests await. Now, you might be thinking to yourself at this point, hang on a minute, all of these Britain names that they're throwing around, they sound a bit Welsh. And, well, yeah, there's a good reason for that. In fact, the Welsh characters in the game... Sorry, the Britain characters in the game, in particular King Rory, do all speak with Welsh accents, probably even played by Welsh voice actors. And to give Ubisoft at least some credit, uh, I like this because it proves that they've done some research at the very least. Because as I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, the Britons, the original inhabitants of the British Isles, as far as there can be said to be any original inhabitants of the British Isles, were pushed further west as each successive wave of invaders or settlers or colonists or whatever the hell you want to call them arrived from continental Europe, first the Romans, and then the Angles, and the Saxons, and now the Vikings, and then later still, the Normans. All of those original inhabitants were forced further and further west, into what is now Wales and modern-day Cornwall. And so it's actually probably reasonably accurate that any Britain characters in Assassin's Creed Valhalla speak with a Welsh accent and have Welsh names since the overwhelming majority of people living in the British Isles today who can trace their ancestry all the way back to those early Britons are actually the Welsh anyway. Anyway, coming up we have a fairly major story development and what for me at least is certainly one of the funniest parts of this game. It's just a shame that it leads into the part of the game that pisses me off more than anything else. Captain Aeneo. Explain to the good bishop our position. Yes, my sovereign. Bishop Dearlove. We are deaf to offers of peace until Guriad is returned to us. The king's brother The is... king's brother is a moldering sack of cow dung. You. I know your face, your stench. Ivar, the one they call boneless. Did I not gift you that scar myself? Ah, you did. And I mean to gift you a gas, you reeking piss pot in your fat fucking skull. Hold, both of you. Ivar, I like you. I think you're funny, but we had a deal. Please, shut the fuck up. Now is not the time for keeping grudges. We're here to smooth the path to peace. Peace, peace, peace. Not with this bag of Britain slop. On that, we are agreed. Now, now, calm everyone. Good faith is all I ask. You know my demands. Until my brother Gwyriad walks free, peace between us is impossible. He is lucky he can walk at all. Fell on his own blade, fleeing from us. I will soon help you fall on yours. 
Husband, keep your head. It is in our interest to find a way to peace, all of us. First, my brother. First, your head on a pike. Then the runt goes free. Husband, no! Enough! This is a house of God. Let us take some few minutes to gather ourselves, shall we? Eivor, to me. I do not know you well, but Chelbert believes you a steady head. We need such a one. It may be too late. I see the crows of war gathering. I have a hefty sum of silver. Speak to the people here. If the silver will help one bring us toward peace, offer it to them. Okay, so let's see if this brother that Rory's so concerned about can be swayed with a promise of some silver. You are Guriat, are you not? Brother to King Rodri. So I am. And a bruised pawn in your bloody game. How do you stand with your brother? My brother loves me well. Yet he can be slow and stubborn. Would I, King, I'd have played all this quite differently. What if you had the chance? At the crown. I would leap at the chance to rule. But a man needs wealth to bring down a king. Nobles must be bored, you understand. I make no promises, but I may be able to find you the silver you need. Under what terms? Knock Rodri from his throne. Withdraw all Briton soldiers from Shropshire, and never again threaten this border. If you speak true, I would make that bargain gladly. Take the silver. Depose your brother, and you will rule with our support. His blood will gush at my first opportunity. You know, I'm really glad I don't have That's any brothers. <laughs> I should report what I know to Bishop Deola. Well, let's go and give the bishop the good news. Calm yourself, Ivar. Peace is within our grasp, if I can just, you know, convince the bishop to actually speak to me. Eivor, my friend. I asked around, as you suggested. Have you come to a decision? To whom have you given this silver? Rodri's brother will use the silver to take the crown himself, by force. He promised rebellion. Are you sure this was wise? Rodri, I see you mocking me! I challenge you! Single Ivar, combat, no. now! Boneless Ivar. Spineless, toothless, gutless. You cannot kill me! A dragon will be my death, as my seers have foretold. And your brother? Does your destiny guard him? Guriad! <laughs> By God Almighty, I'll... Get him to safety! Go! Quickly! Kill the boneless one! Paint this chapel with his blood! And that, kids, is what happens when you bring Ivar Ragnarsson to peace negotiations. <laughs> 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 Oh, I love him. I think he's great. I really do. <laughs> but anyway, I guess it's war then. <laughs> There's no talking your way out of that. Which, of course, is exactly why Evon did it. He wants war. The war. And by God, he's got it. Vikinger diplomacy! Show the fuckers who the real warriors are. Eva, ah. you have scuppered the peace. Do not be fooled by peace, boy. It is just an empty voice between axe blows. Dear Lord, this is a massacre. We have no choice now but to fight our way out of this. Ah, a good test for you, boy. Lord, forgive us. Stay close, Jailbert. You watch my back and I will pull the knives from yours. Dear Lord, stay here, where it's safest, Bishop. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a minute, Jingles, you, you keep going on about how you absolutely hate what happens here in Shropshire in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, how it's the worst thing that you've ever seen in the game. And up until now, you certainly seem to be enjoying it. And yeah, I am. Um, purely because I think Ivar Ragnarsson is an absolutely fantastic character. And I'm not convinced he's wrong, because King Rory is a slippery shit, and nobody knows him better than Ivar Ragnarsson. So I'm not saying that Ivar's attempts at diplomacy <laughs> couldn't have been handled differently, um, but at the same time, 
Just because he's violent and brutal doesn't mean he's wrong. It's possible, maybe even likely, that we were always going to end up going to war with the Britons. It's possible that we should never have trusted King Rory. It's possible that he was going to betray us at the first opportunity. And it's possible that all Ivar has actually done is save us a lot of time. But it's what happens as a result of this that I found absolutely unforgivable. And unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until the next video to find out exactly what that is. Suffice to say that I've rarely been so disgusted with a game as I was with Assassin's Creed Valhalla when they pulled the kind of shit that you're going to see in the next episode. In the meantime, I hope you're all having a good weekend, and I hope you've enjoyed this one, because that's it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.